So in this video, we're going to talk about conditional probability, um, specifically with two-way frequency tables. These are called two-way tables because they go two ways. You've got one variable here and one variable here, and it just keeps track of the counts. That's why they're frequency. Um, so for example, consider the following table. These are students taking biology at a college. So uh, people who are under 21, full-time students, there were 28 of those, and so on. So imagine, I want to find the probability of like picking a student at random and picking a full-time student given they are over 21. Remember this little line here means given. So basically I'm going to start there. Given that they're over 21, means I'm going to ignore all the rest of the data except this over 21 row. Then I'm going to find how many were full-time students, which would be this 12, but it's not 12 out of 71, it's only out of the over 21s. So it's out of the 28 total who are over 21. You can simplify that if you want and get a decimal, going to leave it as it is for now. All right. Um, by the way, this follows the formula that we talked about in prior videos. So to find the probability of a conditional probability like this, you always do the probability of both divided by the probability of the given thing. In this case, it was given that it was over 21, and which is basically what we did. We found the people that were both um, full-time and over 21, which was this 12, and we divided it by the people who were over 21, which was the 28 total that were over 21. Uh, what happens if we flip it? So what's the probability of being over 21 given you're a full-time student? It seems like those should be the same, but they're not. Uh, the top part will be the same. It's still the over 21 full-time 12 students, but this time it's out of the full timers here. This time it's out of this column, which is the 40 full time students. All right, next, what's the probability you're under 21 given you're a part time student? So this time we're just looking at the part time column. So it's out of those 31. What's the probability you're under 21, which would be the 15? And lastly, what's the probability of being a full-time student given you're a part-time student? In this table, there is no overlap. <laughs> there's 31 part-time, there's 40 full-time. That adds up to 71. So the probability of being a full-time student given you're a part-time student is zero. That can't happen. All right, this table shows um, students if they have a job and if they have a pet. So first let's find the probability that um, somebody in this survey owns a pet. So eight people with a job had a pet and five people without a job had a pet, which is 13 total. And then we also had 13 here, which is total 26. So to find if the probability of owning a pet, that would just be these 13 out of 26 which is ah, 4.5. Next, let's find the probability that you own a pet given you have a job. So once again, this is only going to be out of the have a job row. So out of the students who have a job, which there's 14 of them, how many own a pet? That would be eight out of 14. So eight out of 14, 0.57 approximately. Notice that these are different. They're close, but they're slightly different. The probability of just owning a pet in general and the probability of owning a pet given you have a job is slightly higher. That means because these are not the same, that means that these are not independent events. They are dependent. Remember that rule that we talked about um, in a prior video, there are two ways to prove that two events are independent. One is, well, 
multiply their two probabilities together, and if you get their combined probability, then they're independent. Or um, you could show that the probability of just any event is the same as the probability of the event given that the other one happened, which is, this is the one we're using here. The probability of owning a pet given they have a job is different from this. They're not equal, so that means they are not independent. All right, here's another example. We're gonna have to make our own two-way table here. We've got 100 total students who were surveyed about their preference for a social event. Uh, 50 were 10th graders and 50 were 11th graders. So we've got 10th graders and 11th graders. Whoops, come on. All right, of the 10th graders, we've got bowling and we've got a dance. So of the 10th graders, 30 chose bowling, 20 chose dance, it's 50 total. And then of the 11th graders, it says 20 chose a bowling party, and 30 chose a dance, which is also 50 total. Notice there are also 50s in each of these columns as well. And total, that's our 100 students. So there's my two-way table that represents the data. Next, let's find the probability that just anybody picked bowling, which would be the total bowling out of the full total, so 50 out of 100, or 0.5, 50%. What's the probability that somebody picked bowling given their 10th grader? So like out of the 10th graders, how many picked bowling? And that would be 30 out of 50. You're probably noticing, and that's 0.6, those are not the same. So basically the 10th graders were a little different. So bowling and being in 10th grade are not independent because these were not the same. All right, let's do, actually I'm gonna leave this example. If you want, you can pause it and try that on your own, but I'm gonna 